first time I've seen you smile in here ever. <laughs> Is that because of the Jack comment we coming in, or was something else? <laughs> One smile for the season. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, thanks for coming out. Really appreciate you uh, showing up. Good weather today. Are we gonna get one more snow? Stop. Uh, that's it, right? Probably on Saturday. <laughs> you say probably on Saturday. <laughs> Speaking of weather, we're supposed to have a great day on Saturday. It's supposed to be like 70 degrees, sunny. So. Encouraging everyone to come on out and, and uh, check out our our deal. We're headed into the final week of, of spring practice. Um, when we get 15 of them, we go Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Saturday for uh, for five weeks. And uh, so it's been it's been good. I feel like the team is improving you know, with the guys that we have out there uh, competing and able to practice. Um, we've really been focused on having a relentless mindset and everything that we do. You know, being tough, disciplined, and selfless. Just really hammering those uh, those core those core principles, and players have really responded. It's been really fun to work with them this spring, uh, and and the coaches and some and, and the new coaches as well. Really fit in uh, nicely and really brought a lot of value to our to our team. Um, Caused a Spartan Spartan kickoff on on Saturday, so I'm excited to get back in the woodshed and. Host that. We're going to have more of a practice type format with some scrimmaging, um, as opposed to as, as opposed to a game. Um, <clears throat> that's worked for us in the past. Um, you know, just with our numbers, um, it's going to be actually be more competitive for us. We can get a lot more out of it, um, as opposed to trying to split the team up and, and, and create some type of game. So you know, we'll get that done. It'll, it'll be you know, up tempo. It'll be organized. You'll see guys get a chance to play fast. You'll see, you know, good on good, you know, good players running against good players, like ones on ones, twos on twos, things like that. Um, which is, uh, which is, you know, really, you know, how we practice pretty much every day. So you'll see guys get a chance to grind and and, and compete, and see some of the, some of the new guys that you guys know, kind of have the same, you know, go full speed. So I think that'd be good. Um, a lot going on on campus. You know, we have the. Uh, what I understand, we have a baseball game and a, and a softball game going on Saturday afternoon. That's great. We got the we have the Izzo Legacy Race um, in the morning, which finishes in the stadium. And uh, so, for our fans, you know, we're going to have a lot of activities at the stadium and in the concourse plan. So, you know, great weather, um, a great day to come out and support the Spartans and and, uh, and see some of these guys that are that are healthy and in action. You know, other than that, I'll just uh, just open up for, for questions if anybody has any. No, I think it was last week, whenever Jay was in, it was, we were talking about the linemen having actual healthy linemen, but he was saying how it feels like night and day difference from last spring to this spring, just in everything you guys are able to do. Have you kind of had that same feeling that it's a big difference, and how can that translate five, six months down the road when we were actually playing games? Yeah, well, you know, you, you practice a lot more than you actually get a chance to play games. And that's when you really, when you really improve and you really get better is when you get a chance to practice. I, I believe about a year ago, you might have five scholarship linemen uh, available to practice. And um, I think we took two walk-on defensive linemen and converted them to office lines so we could practice. We, we had to modify our practices quite a bit. We had to, Stop practices and have TV timeouts and give guys a, a blow, and uh, so they could, uh, so the rest of the guys could get worked as well. So it, it took a, just took a lot out of, uh, took us out of our normal routine and how we practice, and uh, and then the guys that were out, you know, they, you know, obviously not able to develop on the field, um, which is, uh, which is, you know, every day that you get a chance to work, you know, it helps you. Or she come back a football player, and so uh, I think we started the spring with, with like 19 healthy guys on the office line with the uh, scholarship and walk on guys included. So we were able to get a lot of work, um, helps with the chemistry, 
the offensive line helps with, uh, with competition. It makes everyone better. It helps when you're when you are developing guys that play multiple positions up front, which you have to be able to do that. And so, uh, so overall, it just helps the, uh, the overall continuity of our of our line and our offense. Well, you have the second scrimmage of the spring on Saturday, right? This past Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, we went out there and got out there a little bit. Okay, what are, what are your takeaways were from that, and then if you have any sort of uh, update on the quarterback competition that you've seen from those guys in the live action? Yeah, I thought the guys, I thought the guys played hard. Um, it was very competitive. We have competition pretty much at every position. The guys, uh, you know, needing to, needing to prove it every single day. Um, you know, earn earn their role, and um, it was you know. Good back and forth offense and offense and defense. We got a lot of good work on special teams as well, um, and uh, you know, all the guys got got a, a lot of good work. I thought it was I thought it was physical. I saw some guys flying around on defense. Got some hands on some balls uh, in the back end, which was good. And, uh, and it was just very it was just very very competitive. Now with the quarterback. Situation is still open competition. It's going to be that way for a while. But all the guys are competing um, at, a, at a high level. And, uh, I think they're all developing. And I think they're all getting better. And the next up, guys. Uh, <laughs> Mel, you, uh, I'm wondering with, when deciding how you're going to do the spring game, I know the first couple of years, like you said, it was kind of out of necessity. You had to do it that way. But you've also been involved you know, over your career with the traditional deal. So I'm wondering. Is it again more out of necessity this year, or are there some things from these past two years that you've learned or taken from that sort of alternate format that you like, and that you just kind of want to push forward with that? I think a combination of both. If we have if we have more defensive linemen healthy and, and ready to go, we might be able to be able to divide divide the squad up and have a competitive uh, kind of game. But uh, but you know that's not the case. But you know when you are. Uh, you know, when, you, when you split a squad up, um, sometimes if it's not if it's not going to be hyper competitive, um, then it's, it's kind of like just like a, it's not very fun for, for coaches to evaluate guys. You know, it might be it might be a little more fun for the fans to see guys that's going up and down the field. And, you know, but. <laughs> You know, but you know, for us, we need to be able, we need to see guys compete and, and, and strain really hard to, to win our one on ones on, on each play. And so, um, you know, that that practice format um, with scrimmaging is is good. And uh, when you're really trying to evaluate, and you know, we only get 15 of them, and so um, you know, we don't plan on, on wasting a day. We're going to get something done on Saturday. I have two questions. First okay. one, first one is just who came up with the Spartan football kickoff name? That was not me. <laughs> I don't have that type of creativity in my mind. That came from, I think, our marketing department. Um, what was your next question? The next question is about uh, the defense, and more specifically the new coaches that you brought in, Dyron yeah. Reynolds and Jim Salvato. Just in a short amount of time that you've had in spring ball practices, where have they uh, helped your guys the most within these couple of weeks? Yeah, so um, we'll, we can start with Dyron. And I, I'm on Dyron for a long time. I tried to, I tried to, uh, to, to get with him when I was in Jacksonville back in, I think it was 2009. I mean, he's a very, very experienced coach. Um, I think he's got 11 years in the NFL. Uh, he's coaching Power Five. He's coached guys that, into the league. He's coached Pro Bowlers. He's coached Hall of Famers. Um, he's a very, very good teacher, and he's uh, he relates well to players, and he has instant credibility when he walks in the room um, because of his resume. And then, um, you know, once he started working with the players, uh, you know, the guys could. You know, they could actually see that you know this coach is going to make me better. And a couple, uh, I think it was it was last week in one of the team meetings. I asked I asked the, the team. I said to I said D line, do you guys think coach coach do you guys think Dyron can coach? You know they're like they're all like 
Yeah, he can coach. Coach, he can he can coach. And uh, and they wouldn't have said that if they didn't if they didn't think that we're very honest in our team meetings. If they didn't think that he could coach, they'd probably just kind of look at me like, mm, no, I'm not not so much. So uh, you know that was that was good to see. And um, I think he's really I think he's really helped with uh, with technique and fundamentals and uh, in explaining uh, to players you know why we need you to do things a certain way and um, that's that's very important to for guys to, to understand the why um, it just helps them um, just helps them understand and buy in more and when you understand why then um, when things are broke you, you know how to how to fix it or, or when the coach is is trying to get it fixed. You understand what he's what he's trying to do. So um, that Ross that Ross been great, and um, I'm glad that he was available because um, I, I wanted to work with him for 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 a number of years now. Um, and then Jimmy Jimmy Salgado um, also, um, I, you know, I met him uh, I met him in 2020 when I when I walked in. He was one of the coaches that, that, um, that I was considering uh, for our staff. Obviously, he was with the Buffalo Bills at the time and, and uh, worked with uh, Coach, Coach Leslie Frazier for six years there. Um, Coach Frazier is a, is a good friend of mine. He's been a mentor uh, to me for many years. And um, that Ron has a, and uh, Jimmy has a lot of, he has a lot of experience. Um, he's a, you know, he's a, a very good teacher, um, and he knows you know what it's like to coach at the, at the highest level, and to and to get guys better. You know, people. Um, you know, people. I think sometimes when you look at the the NFL, I think because I've heard people tell me this or ask me to say, you know, don't those guys in the NFL don't they already know what to do? You just gotta you know tell them what the players are, and they just they just get it done. And the NFL is a really a developmental league. It really is. I mean, you have to you have to be able to develop players, um, and that's how you make your name as a coach in the NFL. Is uh, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of undrafted uh, free agents and late round picks in the NFL. Um, obviously, because of the salary cap and things like that, you have to be able to take young players and develop them. You have to be able to take guys that you know, kind of, you know you don't know what type of really background they come from, the type of uh, you know, what type of college program they come from. They have a talent, but maybe they, they haven't um, been exposed to certain types of schemes or things you have to develop them. And so, um, you know, Jimmy's one of those guys that knows how to develop players. And, and um, he's an excellent recruiter, and he has instant credibility when he, when, he, uh, when he walks in the room. And I can see that the guys have already, already taken to him. Um, he, spends, he spends individual time with them. In the individual work, um, in the group work, I mean, he's uh, he's very efficient and uh, very effective with the guys. Uh, really good for our staff. He brings a lot of value to our staff. So uh, those 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 two additions to our staff, I think, have been for me have been home runs. No, with fans being here Saturday, what are you hoping they see from the team and kind of their excitement level of getting to see the guys for the first time this year? Yeah, so um, I think really the the, the, the same things that, that I'm going to be going to be looking for. I'm going to, going to see how guys compete. You know how hard they play. I'm going to see um, the, the type of toughness that they play with. Um, you know the discipline um, and uh, you know really the buy into the team. You know are they uh, are they selfless? You know do they do they celebrate together? trying to draw attention to themselves? Um, are they helping each other out? You know, are they communicating? Um, you know, obviously, you know, organization, you know, of the practice, you know, the tempo, uh, just the intensity in which you know, everyone moves around is important. Um, and we talk to our players all the time, you know, you're gonna play how you, how you, how you practice. And, you know, at some point, you like your practices to be, you know, be harder than the games um, because of the competition that you have. Uh, 
you know, the, you know guys going good on good and uh, the situations that you that you put them in. And um, it's it's a little it's different when you get into the when you when you when you go into the stadium. Um, it's just a different it's a, a different environment. So um, you know these guys have been been working for a number of weeks, obviously. And so we're we're not going to put anything new in, you know, uh, going into into that uh, into that into that into that practice. So I'm going to be reviewed. So we should have a high level execution. Um, but it's always good to see how guys um, how they perform, or how they respond, like in the stadium um, and when there's fans there. That's a lot different than practicing in the indoor or on the out there on the back grass practice fields or when we scrimmage in the stadium and we don't have fans. And so um, that's, that's important. So as many fans as, as we can get there, uh, the better, because it's going to be um, more, more game-like, more, more of a game type of feel um, for our guys, especially, especially the young players. Um, but um, you know, I mean, everyone's going to want to see you know, some of the, the, uh, the newcomers that are healthy and available to practice. They you know, haven't seen them before in, in the green and white, whether they're whether they're freshmen or they're you know they're transfers. And so I think that's going to be interesting to a lot of to a lot of fans to see what some of these these new guys look like and how they think, how they think that they're going to be able to help us uh, this season. Well, with the uh, departures of uh, Saeed and uh, Thomas Wilcher and et cetera in the recruiting department. What was the thought process behind that, and what do you see the vision for that specific aspect of your program going forward? Yeah, you know, I, w I don't want to get into the details of, of those changes, but you know, we're in the process right now of uh, looking to uh, fill that, that recruiting position um, and, uh, and then other positions, you know, underneath that. And so we're in the process of doing that right now. I feel really good about um, the direction we're going. In our search, and uh, recruiting is extremely important. Um, we need to recruit at a, at a very high level. Um, we need to get better um, every year in recruiting. We need to be able to win um, the recruiting battles. That we need to win to be able to, to win the games. So we need to be able to win during the season. I mean, recruiting is is uh, is critically important. So um, you know, the people that we uh, that we hire in those positions. Be, uh, be huge hires for us. Follow up, I mean, obviously you had Jeff leave in mm -hmm. 2021, and obviously Saeed came in. I mean, are those guys carrying out, I mean, a, a kind of a singular vision, or are they bringing their own uh, thing to the, you know, to the table? And mm -hmm. if, if not, I mean, like, do you, I mean, would you like to have more, I guess, stability, I guess, in, in that department, just so that you have Kind of a clear idea of what you want to go. Yeah, we have a we have a clear idea. It always it always starts with me in terms of you know, what type of football team do I do I want to have and what, what the team's going to look like. Um, and then we go out to, to identify those players and recruit them and hopefully sign them. Um, you know, there's always going to be change. Um, that's just the only thing that's, that's constant. <laughs> you know, and uh, whether it's recruiting or you know on the on the, the coaching side of it, or it could be creative side of it, it could be a strength conditioning, it could be in the training room, I mean there's always there's always movement. And so uh, but the concept is is me and, and, the, and the vision that uh, that I have for this football team and I know what championship football teams look like. And so we have to recruit to that. No, uh, yep. to the uh, sort of back to the quarterback position but be for any position. I'm wondering philosophically if you've got an older player and younger players competing and, and there's you know how you look at those two things in terms of upside and where a guy can grow to if they're given that opportunity in and if, if somebody has more time and they're equal does that matter like when you're when you're looking at positions it quarterback here or be it somewhere else so how do you evaluate those things? Yeah well first I tell the players you know um, if you're good enough you're old enough. So it doesn't matter if you're a freshman or you know, you're a you know, returning starter for two or three years, you know, whoever the you feel like is going to give us the best chance, we're going to go out there and uh, we're going to put them out there on the field and give them an opportunity to play. 
and uh, show us what they can do. And so, uh, you know, it's always case by case. Um, but, uh, you know, if a couple guys, uh, you know, if, 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 it's, if it's even with guys, and both guys, um, we feel like it gives us the best chance to win for, you know, two or three guys to play at one position, we'll do that. I think like that gives us the best chance. We want as many guys to be out there playing as possible. We didn't bring guys here to sit. We bring, we bring them here to play. So, uh, you know, we'll, uh, you know, we'll just see how it goes. That's that's what, that's at any position. Even, even quarterback, you would go with multiple? I, have, I haven't done that in the past. Um, that's not something that I'm looking to do. Um, but again, whoever gives us the best chance, you know, overall, is uh, that's what we're going to do. Put out there, and we have so have open competition at every position. Um, now, last week at spring practice, I'm wondering what you've seen so far from the secondary. Obviously, a lot younger now with X and um, Pendel and Muir and Ronald gone, and, and a lot of youth in there. And, and how you've maybe seen them uh, progress at all? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're a salty group. They got a lot of those guys got a chance to play when, during this past season with on the job training, so they uh. And then we have some of our, our young guys that are you know, getting stronger in the weight room, they're gaining weight, which is good. And the playing time that they got, um, they got this past season, it's, it's, been, it's been helpful. They have, a, they have a little different look about them when they step on the field now, as opposed to when they were uh, you know, just true freshmen just coming in the door. And so, um, you know, our, some of our, our younger players, um, you know, Some of our more, more talented guys. You know, so uh, I like what I've seen so far. It's not the secondary. And, uh, it's a lot of competition, and it's just going to get more competitive as we go. Now you're talking about games and game day environments, I guess. There's been a lot more chatter this year than ever before about ending the spring mm -hmm. with a game or even a controlled scrimmage against another opponent, mm -hmm. especially from coaches in the South. How do you feel about that? Yeah, well, um, we won't be doing that on Saturday. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always open for, for you know, new ideas, and I feel like it can help our program. I'd be willing to listen. Do you think that would help the program to have that kind of an end, not like an NFL preseason game, but something to wrap it up where you get a look against other opponents? You know, it, it all depends. I mean, I've, I've been like in the NFL where you would um, not preseason game, but you you know you practice against another another team for a couple of days, and and, uh, and sometimes they can be good, sometimes not so good. You know, so it really just depends on who that who those people are and the coaching staff and what you want to get done. And uh, so it's really it's really case by case. I don't really. It was kind of like a hypothetical, so I can't yeah. really, you know, I can't really answer that. But um, what do you think? That'd be fine. If the coaches voted, though, now the coaches convention or something. You said if they voted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When they vote. And when they, they vote. vote. Yes. How would you vote? We'll see when that vote happens. <laughs> <laughs> that's why. We, that's why I had to wait for Jack before I walk in. We can't do this without. Steve and Chris. No, I remember uh, leading in, we were talking a lot about uh, changes you were looking to make to, for injury prevention, safety type mm -hmm. of stuff, lighting it up here and there where you could. I'm just wondering how that's gone. You think how it's maybe evolved, how the players are taken to it? Are you still able to be productive? All those things. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's gone well. I mean, we've, we've gone above and beyond to try to you know, make sure that we're keeping guys as healthy as possible. I mean, football is a, it's a Collision sport, and so um, you know there's going to there's going to there's, you know, there's going to be some injuries, um, but we we stay off the ground a lot better, um, you know this spring. I mean, we we haven't been on the ground uh, unless we're scrimmaging. We shouldn't be on the ground at all. Guys shouldn't be on the ground. This is the best that we've done really since I've been here in terms of guys standing up, guys understanding how to practice. Spend just a, a lot of time, you know, showing guys 
examples of how to practice and how not to practice. You know, how do you how do you get how do you get work in? How do you get better? Um, and everyone stay off the ground. You can go hard. You know, take care of your teammates while you're doing it. Still be aggressive. Um, I mean, you can go. You can watch like NFL practices and you know and. Uh, you know, in the training camp, guys are competing for jobs. I mean, you know, like that's their livelihoods, right? And you can go, you know, you can go days without seeing the guys on the ground. Because when guys are on the ground, that's when guys get hurt, you know. So, um, you know, we've done a lot better job of that. And then, um, you know, guys come in at different stages of development, like especially like in the spring, because, well, you know, you have guys that are seniors, but in the weight room, you know, Four or five years, um, and you got you, know, you got freshmen just coming in that you know not real strong yet, and they're on the same practice field going the same tempo. So we have to we have to uh, you know, we were very intentional about the matchups that we've had with guys um, in practice and in certain drills, certain contact drills. Um, there was one drill in particular that. We, you know, we've always done, but you know, this spring we we had the small, medium, and large group. <laughs> you know, so we had all the all the skinny guys going against each other, and then the kind of the, the you know those little bit bigger guys in the middle, and then the, the thicker guys, stronger guys, and, and that worked well. Because I mean, I'm not interested in seeing Keon Coleman, six four, two hundred twenty pounds or whatever, going against you know uh, Chance Rucker on day one, right? You know, just come, just. I mean, what are we, what are we gonna get out of that, right? So, we all know what we expect to happen. Then when it does happen, it's like, okay. <laughs> you know, so, and that's just an example of, you know, you know trying to just be smart and, and uh, be intentional. That take, that takes planning. You know, you have to plan that out. Sometimes you have to um, kind of script out, script out some of the the drills, even. In, in even more detail. You just can't say, okay, we're running this drill, give me one line here, one line here, and start going at it. Because you, you know you have a mismatch that you could avoid in the spring. You know, so um, you may not have to do as much of that in the fall. You know, guys that, even you know, but you still gonna have some guys that, that come here in May and June. Um, and even with the even with the tra even when with the transfer guys, um, you know, you're not exactly sure what type of condition they, they're in until you actually get them here. And then, and then you, you know, you have to assess that. You know, some guys that have gotten here, we've had to do some work on those guys or hold them out of certain things. Uh, sometimes they have deficiencies in certain areas and, and we have to try to keep them out of, out, of, out of trouble, keep them on fifth gear, put guys in different color jerseys, things like that, you know, so we can bring everyone along um, and not have as many guys out keep guys healthy because we still got an entire summer program you know, guys will be running and lifting and we'll get a chance to work with them and then we got you know 20 some practice in the fall camp and before that first game so we just want to keep as many guys progressing um, and getting better and keep them on the field as possible. Two more Chris and one wrap up with you. Kind of along those lines with guys who didn't your voice get deeper? Uh, it's just when you ask questions. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's it gets that way a little bit with the weather change. Um, with guys that, that haven't been, you know, the, the guys that were suspended at the end of the year, you had eight guys suspended. How have they reintegrated back into the program? How, guys, especially guys like Zion and Winman and Angelo, guys that were playing a lot of football, and was, if you have an update on Kari as well. Mm -hmm. Don't have an update on Kari. Um, yeah, I mean they've they've integrated, you know, well. They've been, you know been back with us for quite some time now, and so uh, it's been uh, you know something we've gone past it and moving forward. From from a production standpoint, I mean, nothing. With what happened last year, but with what those guys bring, and how much how, how much do those guys in particular, like the three that I mentioned, in particular, were playing a lot of football and a lot of high level football for a few guys mm -hmm. at, at that point. How much? Oh, how much are they difference makers for this team? Yeah, I mean, when you, you saw those, they were out there, those guys were out there playing for us and starting for us, and obviously they were doing that because um, we felt like they gave us the best chance 
to to win games and with those guys being in those roles. And, and so you don't necessarily get better when those guys aren't in there. You know, so um, I'm glad that you know we have them, you know, we have them back. Um, and we'll continue to move forward. But, you, know, you don't you typically don't get better when you lose the players. Uh, the, the new players, the, the mid-year transfers and the, the mid-year freshmen that are in here, the new faces that are in the program, can you talk about some of the names that you've seen that have made an impact so far and what fans will see in a handful of those players, what, they, what they've demonstrated? Maybe give me, give, me, give me some guys that you're thinking about and I can maybe... Okay. Carter, Carter, the running back, or can you say the defensive Nathan, Nathan Carter? Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, I like him. Yeah, he's got really good burst through the hole, um, runs hard. He came in, you know, very impressive in the weight room. You know, he looks apart. Um, he's very humble and very hardworking. Um, does an uh, excellent job in the special teams work that we ask him to do. Um, and, uh, he's uh, seems to be picking up the scheme pretty quickly. You know, he's very mature and very attentive. And to Miche and also uh, Jerry Jackson, the defensive tackle. Yeah, uh, to Miche. Um, he, you know, he brings something a little different, you know, for us because he's a big hand. I think he walked in the door at like 280, something like that, um, which is, uh, you know, we, we need to be able to win at the point of attack, and we need to be able to have mismatches on tight ends, you know, in that C area, and to be able to play, you know, 4-3 four, defense, 4-2-5 four, or whatever, so four down defense, so. You know, I like I like his size. I like what he brings to the table. He's got a lot of upside still. I mean, he's, a, he's still a relatively young player. Uh, Jared's got you know got really really good size in, the, in our out of season conditioning program. He showed a lot of leadership. You know, he's been a little um, a little banged up. You know, so we haven't been able to get um, you know that type of work out of him that we would like. But um, you know, he has the size. And he's shown to have the intangibles that we're looking for, and, and he'll be back with us. He'll be, uh, he'll be, he'll be a strong addition for us. Thanks, coach. All right. Thank you so much for coming out. Hopefully, we'll see, we'll see you on Saturday.